So, if you're wondering why I look like well, more than I usually do anyway, I have a fever, I have a cough, I have a headache, but I don't have it. My mother had me tested. But since my goal is to hit 25,000 subscribers by the end of the year and we are fairly close, the show must go on and I will record this video anyway. And in today's video, we're going to talk about our easy rig. Well, at least it's called easy rig, but it's by a company called Digital Photo. And I'm not 100% sure if they're even supposed to call it easy rig, but that's none of my beeswax. So our easy rig plus our serene that's supposed to take care of the up and down movement as well as our ring. And we've been using this for a while. And in this video, I want to tell you if it's worth it. Do we love it? Do we hate it? And who is this actually for? My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Fix. To get a little bit of structure into this video, I will talk about the ring first, then move on to the easy rig combined with the serene, and then I will talk about both of them together. If you've ever watched any kind of gimbal review on this channel, you heard me talking about me wanting to have a ring since the very first time I reviewed a gimbal on here. And ever since we sold our original Ronin, I was looking for the perfect ring setup to work with our cinema cameras or our lighter cameras as well. And since most of the gimbals out there right now don't have a dedicated ring I went third party and bought the one from digital photo and this one is originally meant to be used with the crane 3s but we also used it with the DJI RS2 and here are my top reasons why I think everybody should have a ring number one I think it's just way easier to handle and if you have to go higher or lower you can just adjust your grip and don't have to awkwardly bend over which helps fatiguing a lot speaking of fatigue I also think that it's way more comfortable to hold with both hands symmetrically on either side and you can easily just put it down whenever you want because it comes with feet underneath next up I also think that you can get more stable shots with it not only because you can hold it symmetrically but also because you have a horizontal line in front of you at all times Times. That way it's way easier to have a level horizon at all times and the gimbal motors don't have to work as much. Lastly, and that is probably my biggest reason, is that you're able to mount a lot of stuff to the ring, like an external monitor, an external microphone, or even external handy recorder if the camera you're shooting with doesn't have XLR inputs. And you can use wireless receivers or transmitters and you can basically attach everything to the gimbal you like. And the one from Digital Photo also comes with a rosette mount. And that is pretty cool if you have a camera like the C300 Mark III, because now I can detach my side grip and attach it to the gimbal itself. And now I'm able to not only have a more stable grip, but also be able to control my entire settings on the camera and stop and start recording. All right, so now that I established that I do like ring setups, let's talk about the digital photo ring in particular. So it's well built, it's really easy to set up. It also comes with a carrying bag, which is quite nice. And it also has a dedicated plate for the Crane 3S. And that comes with location pins. So even if you're running with the setup, it doesn't shift and move around after a while, which it does when using the generic plate that also comes with it on some generic gimbals like the Crane 2S, for example. And although I didn't have that plate by recording of this video, Digital Photo hit me up and told me that they knew have a base plate for the DJI RS2 as well. And so this one won't wiggle or just shift or get loose after a while, like I experienced with it when using the generic plate. Granted, I was running with the entire setup with the C300 Mark III, and even then it wasn't too much of a problem, but now that they have a solution for this is really a good thing. So what I don't like about that gimbal is I think it's way too big. I've seen these pictures from the Crane 3S where people put their red cameras on top and then a seven inch monitor mounted on top of the camera. So yes, those setups get really big but I kind of think that's a dumb idea in the first place anyway. So I really wish for the entire setup to be a little smaller because me personally, I don't really like all that space. And overall, the entire setup is really big and a little bit uncomfortable to handle at times when you're not using a really big setup. Mm. 
So let's talk money. I think it comes in at $200. And for $200, I think that the price tag is a little steep considering that it doesn't have any electronics in it, no smart functions, and considering that the new Tilter version that came out for the DJI RS2 at the same price has all these functions. So you can use additional stuff like mounting your battery grip on top or just replacing the side handles by remotes or even add a V-mount plate on the bottom. So overall, I think $200 is a little bit on the pricier side but if you're looking for the perfect solution for your crane 3s because of the lack of competition i think that is still a recommendation for me so if you're using a ring setup for your crane 3s i think the digital photo one is the way to go all right now let's talk about the easy rig and disclaimer first the first time we used this we didn't mount it correctly because we didn't use the rubber band on top to secure the serene and we were made aware of that and ever since we actually used the rubber band so whatever i'm saying right now and if i do have some critiques of the whole setup it's not because we didn't mount it correctly because i had the same experience with it afterwards when we mounted it correctly so why did we buy the easy rig and what is it actually for we bought the easy rig mainly for bell because when bell is using the crane 3s with the canon c300 mark 3 that setup gets heavily quickly and she can't really pick it up let alone film with it for more than five minutes at a time as a matter of fact she actually used it on one shoot and immediately ditched the entire crane 3s because it was too heavy and then went on the shoot handheld for the rest of the day and i admit even for me the entire setup with the ring and an external monitor and stuff mounted to the ring does get heavy very quickly. I can manage if I'm not doing crazy long takes. If I'm shooting a music video and I do some takes at a time and have a break in between, I can barely manage the weight. But after a while it does get heavy and I kind of want to save my bag. So also the same thing applies to me. So I'm also using the easy rig from time to time. So the first thing I have to say, it's really hard to actually put the entire thing on by yourself. The just putting it on is not the hard part, but then attaching a camera to the strip on top is actually not that easy. So even though it's difficult, it's definitely not impossible. What is almost impossible though, is adjusting the strength of the entire setup by yourself. It's hardly possible to reach around on the back sides to actually adjust the strength of your strip. So you definitely do need a second person. It's also a little tedious. So overall, it's not really a progress. At least Bell and I were both not able to do this on our own. So you probably will need a second person on set for this. Once everything was set up and dialed in though, it was really comfortable to wear. For me that is. For Bell, however, it was a different story. Her being on the skinnier and lighter side, also she's a lot smaller than I am, it wasn't that comfortable to wear at all because it just didn't fit her very well. And we tried tightening every strap we could think of, but still every time she was moving, it kind of pulled itself up a little. And that might be due to the fact that she's a woman and obviously built differently than men or that she's just on the small and lighter side. So if you're a smaller or lighter man, then maybe this setup isn't for you either, but that I can confirm. For me, it was comfortable, but I I'm on the taller side, but for her being a small woman, it definitely didn't fit 100% for her needs. And here I want to say one more thing real quick, because all of my experiences could be due to user mistake, because we tried to dial in everything on a couple occasions and we did spend a decent amount of time with it, but we didn't really do a lot of research and really went into how to strap everything on and how to dial everything in. So maybe some of the things that I critique about the whole setup are due to user mistake, but overall the way and the time that we spend setting everything up, some of these things were really unsatisfactory. And for me, I don't really want to spend too much time on set on anything basically. So if that is the case that I have to spend way more time, dial everything in, in order for this to work, then well, my results are basically the same. So now I'm wearing the thing. I dialed everything in and I attached my camera to it, handheld. No gimbal, no ring setup, no nothing. And I just attached it to the top handle of my camera. And now it's actually very comfortable. And I was filming a music video where I was filming on eyesight for five minutes at a time. And I didn't fatigue at all. It was so comfortable to use, it was smooth. And the overall experience was really, really nice. So if this is what you do, that is the perfect setup for it. 
I haven't tried it with a shoulder mount, but I think the results would pretty much be the same and they would be very satisfactory. However, that is not the way that I'm shooting 99% of the times. Usually I like to walk around or at least I like to go down in my knees, get that low angle shot or just move into my subject. So I'm starting on my torso level and then go higher the closer I get to my subject. And with that setup, that doesn't really work because once you dial in the strength of your camera strap, you can't really adjust it anymore without introducing a lot of shake into your camera. Adjusting everything really isn't that hard though. If you just wanna go lower, you just pull the entire setup down and just keep it that way. And then it kind of put itself in place. Same goes for going higher than that. And that is really satisfactory, but you can't do it while shooting. So once you shoot and then you go down or up, you really introduce way too much shutter for this to actually work. Plus, overall, going on the lower side of the thing really doesn't work. So if you want to get some low angle shots with the entire thing, and I love me some low angle shots, it really didn't work. Because even for me, when pulling it down, it just pulled the entire setup back up. Or when I went down to my knees, it also didn't really fit well. And the entire setup was just annoying and I just didn't want to have it. And it didn't do anything either. So that being said, for low angle shots, I don't think this is the right tool. So now let's talk about some walking shots. In my understanding, the Serene was there to limit your up and down movements. But in reality, it actually introduced way more up and down movement than when shooting handheld without the thing. I even did a comparison test and I just slowly followed Bell once with the entire setup and the second time just with my camera handheld. And I think the results were way better when I was just walking around handheld, trying to stabilize the camera with my body strength and the ninja walk. And quite frankly, I actually thought that this was what the entire setup was for, and that was a little disappointing. So as I mentioned earlier, the entire setup was initially for Belle, so she could have longer takes and film without fatiguing. And if you know Belle's work, 95% of the times she's filming on the ice. So with her ice skates, lots of movements, so needless to say, the entire setup didn't work at all. She tried it a little bit, but then again, she got rid of it because it just didn't do anything. It was uncomfortable and she really wasn't flexible enough for her line of work to work. Maybe a ready rig is better for this, but I haven't tested this, but the easy rig solution is definitely not if you do any kind of action movement or a lot of walking or running. All right, last but not least, the entire thing together. Let's put the Crane 3S with the C300 and the ring and the Easy Rig all together and see if that does anything for us. And that definitely did, because the entire ring setup, as I've already mentioned, is really heavy. But with the Easy Rig, it's so easy to use. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to touch it and you can just let it hang there and the Easy Rig takes the entire weight. So there's no fatiguing and as a plus, you can also just manage all the settings on your camera and have full access to it. And without that, you have to put the camera and the gimbal down. But with the Easy Rig, you can just let it hang there or just grab it with one hand and use the other hand to just set your entire thing up. Unfortunately, here we did have the same limitations, if not more, when it came to movement. When I'm doing a tilt reveal that I do a lot, the ring setup was actually too tall and I hit the top of the easy rig more than once. And same goes for movements or low angle shots, is that it's really uncomfortable and it's just not really meant for that. However, when just straight walking around, I actually thought that there was less up and down movement and the entire thing was a little bit more smooth than it was without the easy rig. So maybe when you have a heavier and larger setup with already stabilization built in, then the entire thing actually works to your advantage. It didn't when just shooting with the camera on its own, but with the gimbal and the ring and just walking, I thought it was a little bit smoother than it was without it. Not too much though. So let's make a decision here. Who is this entire setup actually for? I think this is perfect for a really specific niche environment. Let's say you're filming a music video the way that I did and you wanna have the same angle for a longer period of time or you do a lot of narrative work like filming actors or interviews and you don't really move the camera around too much but you still wanna have a handheld feel and don't wanna have the hassle of a tripod and you wanna be able to at least do like a left and right shift and don't do any level shifts at all. So if you're in that kind of niche environment, I think it's worth every penny and it works very well for these kind of scenarios. But if you like me and you wanna walk around a lot, you wanna do a lot of low angle shots, high angle shots, and just move throughout all your takes, then the entire setup is definitely not for you and I can't recommend it at all. 
I hope this video helped you make an informed decision and if this tool is actually the right tool for you. And by the way, I recorded everything into my new Tentacle Trek E wireless recorders in 32-bit float. So let me know what the audio actually sounds like down in the comments below and I will be doing a review on that soon. So make sure to subscribe and put the notifications on if you're interested in that kind of gear review as well. And if you like this video, actually like the video and I hope to see you on the next one.